Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Residents protest lack of electricity in Westmoreland community. Dozens of angry residents of Darling Street in Southern Alamar, Westmoreland, blocked the main thoroughfare to protest over a lack of electricity in sections of the community. The protesters used old furniture, stones, used appliances, and other debris to block a section of the roadway. Reporters understand that a failed transformer knocked out the power. Residents lamented that they have been suffering due to outage, citing food doing bad in refrigerators and children being unable to participate in distance learning. A police team was displaced to the area. So too were personnel from the Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS. Despite the presence of the crew, the power was not restored. Efforts by reporters to receive a comment from JPS representative for the Western region were unsuccessful. Call for owners of stolen vehicles to come forward. Members of the public who had a Suzuki Vitara motor vehicle stolen are being asked to contact the Police Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations Branch, CTOC. The police indicated that cops recovered two Suzuki Vitara motor vehicles, one red and the other black. The models of the vehicle are between 2008 and 2014. To contact the CTOC, persons are encouraged to call 876 922-2373 or 876-922-7322. Police say reports of a shooting in Spanish Town Falls. The police are refuting claims being circulated on social media platforms that there was a shooting in Spanish Town St. Catherine. They say the assertions are false. However, the police say cops have heightened their presence in Spanish Town and its environs. The police stated that there has been tension in sections of Spanish Town due to going gang conflict. Three gunmen killed in Hanover crash identified. The police have now identified the two men and the teen who were killed in Sunday's crash along the Barbican Main Road in Hanover. They are 27-year-old Jermaine Scott, unemployed of Pitford St. James, Courtney Lazarus, otherwise called Lazzy, of Salt Spring St. James, 17-year-old Javed Reed, otherwise called Javi of King Street in St. James. It is reported that around midday, Wade Lazarus and Scott were traveling in a silver Nissan Latio motor car from the direction of Montego Bay towards Lucy. On reaching a section of the Barbican Main Road, they reported received news that a police spot check was going on along the Mosquito Cove Main Road. It is reported that the driver quickly turned around the vehicle and sped back in the direction of Sandy Bay. On reaching a section of the roadway, the driver reported the lost control of the vehicle collided in a duty tour bus that was transporting four tourists from Montego Bay to Negril. The occupants of both vehicles including tour bus operator and the four tourists sustained injuries and were rushed to hospital where Lazarus Reed and Scott were pronounced dead. The injured tourists and the tour bus operator were treated. A search of Lazarus Reed and Scott and the vehicle in which they were traveling led to the seizure of two illegal guns which contained ammunition. Cops urge caution after 7 million Western Union haste. St. Mary Police are urging business operators to ramp up security measures and to increase vigilance following a break-in at the Orocabesa Outlet of Western Union on Tuesday morning. Approximately 7 million was stolen. Superintendent Bobby Morgan Simpson, who heads the St. Mary Police Division, told reporters that the intruders were masked and also spray-painted security cameras before prising off the grill and removing a vault containing Jamaican and foreign currencies. A Hawaii security response team was alerted to the scene about 3 a.m. Western Union outlets in Portmore, St. Catherine, and Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth have been targeted by thieves in the last two years. Morgan Simpson noted that the Western Union outlet was properly secured with grills, surveillance cameras, vault alarm, and a security response team. She has called for business operators to vet their hires as some hits are inside jobs. The divisional chief has also said that business person should be on the lookout. See who might be coming in to scout out the location. Persons just come in, not buying anything, but just come in looking around. You have to be careful of those persons. Take note of them. Look for any distinguishing mark, Morgan Simpson stated. A lot of times, when these persons go to these break-ins or robberies, they usually do their homework. Disabled father of four needs a job. After a horrific traffic mishap when he was 10 years old, 
many people did not think Omar Johnson would live. He did, and though his life has been filled with pain, the 36-year-old has managed to act out of living. Now he is asking for a job, one his broken body can manage to execute successfully, so that he can continue to care for his family. He also longs for a place they can call home. It's the mercy of God where I am still alive. I am grateful for that, and I have been trying everything to live a somewhat normal life. I went to Hart and got a level 2 certificate in agriculture, but nobody don't want to really hire me when they see that I'm disabled, he told reporters. It doesn't matter any type of help me get is good because right now I don't have it. So if even a job that I can manage and it won't be too hard on me, I will do it, he pleaded. Johnson was reduced to tears as he detailed the ordeal that changed his life. I was coming from school in a taxi packed with children, and I was the one sitting at the door, so I came out to let out another child. The driver sped off and I wasn't fully in the car. I fell and was hanging out, and it pulled me a good little distance. It mashed me up real bad, and most people think I wouldn't make it, he told reporters. His mother helped ferry him back and forth to the hospital for years. Then, as he became older, he began trying to earn his way in life by doing odd jobs that came his way. When I realize that I can help myself and a season comes in, I pick and sell them. Or, when I attempt to pick up census for the government, I would do that too, Johnson said. I always try to help myself. Whenever I used to work, they used to say, if my two hands could work, I would be more excellent. So right now, not being able to help myself is really hard on me, he said. His last job was on a chicken farm. He began in April of last year, but it ended two months later. I leave in June because the job become a little hectic. I started to feel pain in my hands and my body was just in pain, so I had to leave it and go home, he said. He is worried that he can no longer provide for his family. In Seven Heights, Clarendon, he currently shares a one-bedroom house with his common-law wife and their four children, age 11, 7, 3, and 3 months old. I really need one of those government houses so I could have more space for me and the children. Right now, it is six of us in a one-bedroom house, and it's hard because I'm not in a position to work and build another house, Johnson told reporters. But for now, his most urgent need is a job. Anyone who wishes to assist Johnson may contact him at 876-302-3708. Jamaica Legal Information Portal come in. The Ministry of Legal and Constitutional Affairs is taking steps to reduce the extensive time and effort expended to identify gossip notices and laws by introducing a comprehensive Jamaica Legal Information Portal. Portfolio Minister Marlene Malahu Ford said the Ministry has forged a Memorandum of Understanding with Jamaica Promoters Corporation Jumpro for the project which is expected to begin in 2023. She said funding will be provided by the World Bank Group under Component 1 of the Foundations for a Competitiveness and Growth Project. Malahu Ford was making her contribution to the 2022-2023 sectoral debate in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. The Ministry intends to use the web portal to engage on law reform issues. This engagement will serve to inform both the public and the Ministry about issues of concern that are to be considered in the development of law reform proposals, she said. Among the publications that the portal will provide public access to are the revised laws of Jamaica, all editions from the 19th century to present, the annual acts of Jamaica 17th century to present, the Jamaica Gazette publication, proclamation, rules and regulations and bills and acts, and the Gazette Extraordinary. The portal will also include common law making judgment of the court. Malahu Ford said material is currently being scanned and prepared for uploading to the website once it is developed. She told the House that the JLIP's creation complements broader effort to modernize Jamaica's justice sector institutions and processes and supports the government's economic objective to improve the country's business environment and competitiveness. Improvements in the availability of legal information should, therefore, be accessed as complementary to and part of the parcel of the broader framework of Jamaica's economic growth agenda, Malahu Ford stated. Jamaica reports 253 new cases of COVID, 3 deaths. 
Jamaica reported 253 new cases of COVID-19 and three fatalities on Tuesday, according to the latest statistics from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. This pushed the total number of cases of virus since the start of the pandemic to 139,456 and the death toll to 3,079. Of the newly reported cases, there were 151 females and 102 males with ages ranging from 81 days to 91 years. The cases were recorded in St. James 86, Kingston and St. Andrew 58, St. Catherine 23, St. Anne 16, Portland 14, St. Mary 14, Westmoreland 13, Clarendon 8, Trelawney 8, Hanover 6, Manchester 5, and St. Elizabeth 2. Meanwhile, the latest deaths were an 82-year-old man from Kingston and St. Andrew, a 91-year-old from Westmoreland, and an 88-year-old man from Westmoreland. The country also recorded 105 new recoveries, bringing the total number of recoveries to 88,080. The positivity rate for the latest batch of testing was 32%. There are 123 people hospitalized, three of them critically ill. There are 2,852 confirmed active cases on the island. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.